with the University of Florida. Um, you know, we've had a ton of success in the one, the two, the four, and the relays. And, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed people don't recognize that. Look, I, nothing against Christian and Will and Dindy and that crew. They've been phenomenal. But we've had some incredible spirits of harvest come through this program. And I just challenge this group to trust me. You know, we were better indoors than we showed. We were banged up. And, you know, even after conference, going into the regional meet, the prelim meet, I'm trying to mix this, label it right. I said, guys, trust me. We're going to be fine. And when we got here, I said, if you guys trust me, just do what I ask you to do. We're going to win a national title. And they trusted me. And we're the national champion. Coach, what can, say, what can you say about what Joe brought to uh, everybody this evening with, with the, the group? We finished that four by one and then and then really dominated those two sprint races. Well, I mean, I think the big thing with Joe is, um, you know, Joe's a, he's a social media guy. So he spends so much time with people telling him how bad of a starter he is that he started to believe he's a bad starter. And, you know, honestly, we had uh, Mike Marsh came to one of our practices. You know, he's a new USA track and field uh, relay coach. And I asked Mike, what was the one thing Coach Telez said to you guys? Because I have a tremendous respect for Coach Telez. Thank you, buddy. And he said, Coach Telez always, always tell us they don't give away medals at 30. And that was the one thing Joe needed here to understand. I don't have to be ahead at 30. I just need to be close. Because nobody in the world closes like that guy does. Nobody. And, you know, I'm just proud of him. He's trusted me the last... Oh man, four weeks, he's worked so hard on being patient and you know, we still got some work to do on the start, don't get me wrong, but it's way better than it was, but it's just a trust factor. That's just a trust factor. More than Is his top end speed even better than it was a year ago? Uh, there's no doubt about that. You know, he's done some things in practice that, you know, I'm just like, wow, you know, just things that I don't even tell people because they won't believe, it, right? But, you know, I'm gonna give a big shout out to my training staff led by Yolanda Lawrence for helping him stay healthy because he was dinged up indoors and, to Joe for listening to them for a change. And that's a big part of what you saw this weekend was him trusting them to keep him healthy and flexible and all things he needs to be a big, great sprinter. But can't say enough about Joe and the hard work he's put in to get where he is right now. Have you ever coached an athlete with his kind of top end speed before? Um, no, I, I don't know of anybody on the planet that has that kind of top end speed. I mean, he, again, he, and, he, and he's still a baby, he's 20 years old. You know, I mean, he may have just turned 20, I can't remember, but he's still a baby. He's still a lot of growing to do, a lot of learning to do. And the, long, the more he grows and trusts, the better he's going to be. But I've never seen anything like that. Nothing like that ever. And you said you worked a lot on his stuff. Like, what specifically do you do or have you done to work on it? Uh, it would take me all night to tell you all that. But the biggest thing with Joe is it's just patience, like we talked about. Like, he was always trying to be the first guy from the blocks. He's not that guy. You know, I think that reaction time is the most overrated statistic in the history of track and field. And so he was so busy trying to react and get away, he wasn't reacting and putting his, his uh, self in the right motions to, you know, again, he's an accelerator. So the way he was doing it before, he wasn't getting to top end until like 60 or 70, but now he's there at 30, and that's a problem. That's a problem. Uh, obviously, uh, everything was uh, in its right place going into the 4 by 4 but just for those guys to just really put the, you know, the big orange and, and blue and yeah. white punctuation mark at, yeah. at the end of it. And your know, champion told me after SOCs, uh, he goes, we're not even, we're not even close you know, to what our right. what our you know uh, potential sh showcase is to be right. 258 again. Like and yeah. for them to finish it off that way, how special. Was I mean, that was important. I mean, they, you know, you know, people talk and you know the guys were telling me that people thought that our 50 was a fluke, we couldn't do it again, and all that stuff. And I reminded them that before the, before the final, guys, hey, we're the best team in the country. I know the meet's over, but let's be the best team in the country. And they ran 58 again. I guess that's the end of that story. Isn't it? How, uh, how valuable is uh, you know having a guy like? champion wearing your colors as opposed to you know, and, and him just him immersing himself in his full culture. I think the biggest thing with, with champion is is that champion is an absolute fierce competitor and he does everything you ask him to do he does his treatments he does everything you ask him to do and he brought that to the rest of the arena he was that glue is what I will call him for the rest of the arena and because you know you, you know you got a 44 and a 44 and a 45 but then you look up oh I got a 43 I can put on the end that changes everybody's attitude and so um, you know, well you, I'm sure you saw Texas relays when, when Joe ran in, right? So we didn't want to do that again. Right. But I mean, champ, champ's the glue. He's the guy that brought that fire for everybody's belly to do it, do it, do it right well.